to the Livermore Public Library. My name is Caitlin and I am your Teen Programming Librarian. Today we are going to be making these tape resist watercolor prints. You can also use this same technique with chalk on the sidewalk instead. We'll talk about that a little more later. After that, I've got some updates for you for the curbside pickup program. That's right, we've made it even easier for you to pick up your holds. Last, we've got some great book recommendations from librarian Jennifer, our teen literature expert. Let's take a look. Today we're making these tape relief watercolor prints. This is a simple, fun activity that you can do either on paper with tape and watercolors or you can do it outside on the sidewalk with tape and chalk instead. I've seen several houses in my neighborhood with chalk art just like this. Luckily for us, it's pretty easy. Let me show you how. There has been an overwhelming response to the curbside pickup service we started last month. We know it's sometimes pretty hard to get a hold of us on the phone, and that's why we've had our tech team working really hard to put together an online self-service appointment calendar. Let's take a look at this new feature. Have you seen the new text on our hold pickup notice emails? That's right! Click this link to make your own appointment for curbside pickup. You can also access this information from the library's homepage. Under the navigation panel in the top left corner, click curbside pickup. In general, the procedure for curbside pickup remains the same. For instance, please do not come to the library to pick up your items before you have received a hold pickup notification and you have made an appointment. You must have an appointment in order to pick up your items. You can now make your own appointment online with the easy online pickup calendar. However, if you're having trouble, you can still give us a call at 925-373-5505, Monday through Friday between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. To make an appointment, you must first select which day you'd like to come get your things. Appointments are for 15 minute windows between 1 p.m. and 4.45 p.m. Spaces are limited, so if you see a time slot that's no longer there, that means all the appointments for that time have been claimed. Press continue. Then on the next page, you must fill out all fields. You cannot leave any of these fields blank. Please include your first name, last name, email, library card number, a description of the car you'll be arriving in, or alternately, whether you'll be biking or walking, if you are picking up holds for additional members of your family, and if so, we'll need their library card numbers too. You can also pick up summer reading program prizes. Just click yes in that option and then leave your phone number. We'll give you a call to confirm which prizes to pack up for you. Once you've filled out all fields, press Confirm Appointment. This page confirms that you have successfully made your appointment. 
we will send you an additional confirmation to the email address you provided in the previous page. The email confirmation reminds you when your appointment is, and it also gives you an overview of what to expect when you arrive at the library to collect your things. It is our hope that this online curbside pickup appointment calendar will help us help you get your items even faster. I hope you give it a try. For this week's book recommendations, librarian Jennifer has a series and a standalone novel that are both set during the Revolutionary War. Let's take a look and see what she's got. Were you among the swarms of folks watching Hamilton earlier this month? Are you driving your family insane by playing the soundtrack on repeat? Do you want more Hamilton? Guess what? There is a trilogy available on Overdrive and in print that may just keep you satisfied. In Melissa de la Cruz's Alex and Eliza, she shared the imagined romance between a young Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuyler. As battle cries of the American Revolution echo in the distance, servants flutter about preparing for one of New York City's biggest events, the Schuyler's Grand Ball. But Eliza would rather be aiding the colonists' cause than dressing up for some silly party. Still, Eliza can barely contain her excitement when she hears of the arrival of one Alexander Hamilton, a mysterious, rackish young colonel, and George Washington's right-hand man. When Alex and Eliza meet that fateful night, so begins an epic love story that would forever change the course of American history. Librarian Jennifer says this is filled with historical detail, revolutionary war action, and an excellent cat and mouse game between Eliza and Alexander. Now, Librarian Jennifer has not yet seen Hamilton the Musical. I know, shocking and appalling, right? So her previous knowledge of Alexander Hamilton was limited to his involvement in the formation of the United States. She had no idea he was an illegitimate child, of the drama within his family, nor of the deep love he and Eliza had for each other. So a good deal of the history in this story was new to her, but she can see why Alexander Hamilton has become the name on the tip of everyone's tongue. We are changing things up a little bit this week. Instead of a graphic novel selection, we are featuring a second Revolutionary War story written by an author from the Bay Area. In Veronica Rossi's Rebel Spy, Franny Tasker assumes the identity of Emmeline Coates, a young woman who drowns in a shipwreck off the coast of Grand Bahama Island, where Franny lived with her terrifying stepfather. Franny, now posing as Emmeline, is rescued by British merchants and taken to New York. For three years, as the American Revolution proceeds, Franny becomes Emmy, learning manners, proper speaking, and society customs. But when an errand to the local merchant opens her eyes to the world of spying, she realizes that her place in society could provide valuable intelligence to the patriots and the fight for American liberty. Librarian Jennifer loved this introduction to a historical figure she had not known of before, George Washington's female spy, Agent 355. And there was a bit of history she was unfamiliar with as well, prisoner of war ships that the British used to hold the rebels they captured. Miss Rossi gave Franny a completely different background from the spoiled Emmeline, so Franny had quite a ways to go to develop into a woman of society. It should be noted, Franny is of mixed race. So in addition to passing as Emmeline, Franny is also passing as white. This story is full of rich, fascinating characters, some straight from history, others from the mind of Miss Rossi. The spying aspect ended up being a subplot rather than the book's focus, but even without an abundance of spy intrigue, the entire story was 100% enjoyable. So that's it for today's Teen Time with the Livermore Public Library. I hope you enjoy making your chalk art, whether it be on paper or on the sidewalk in front of your home. And I hope to maybe see you sometime during curbside pickup. I'm at the library every once in a while and I might bring you your books. <laughs> and I really do hope you enjoy the book recommendations that Jennifer has picked out for you this week. I will see you next time.